Welcome back. Now, AMCO President Joseph Matunjo has urged government to delay implementing the fourth industrial revolution in the primary sector, saying that the outlook for the mining industry is already bleak. He said this on the sidelines of a press briefing he held yesterday in Johannesburg. Matunjo also uh, has had some harsh words of criticism for mining company Sibanye and its reasons to lay off more than 5,000 workers. He says those reasons our lies. For further on this conversation, we are joined in studio by the president of AMCU, Mr. Joseph Matunja. Thank you so much, Baba, for, for the time. I suppose there are a whole lot of issues we can unpack just with regards to what was said there. I want to start off very firstly just with regards to Sibanye and the scenario there, your conversations with them. Uh, what have those conversations been like and are we any closer to a resolution? With regard to the job losses? Yes, yes. Yes, what we uh, we've received uh, a section 1893 notice uh, advising of their intention. Did you receive that before or after the, the notice that they then handed out to the rest of us uh, in terms of uh, Yeah, I think it was simultaneously. Okay. Uh, I mean, because okay. there was no pre previous conversation before yes. they pronounced it. So, uh, I mean, indeed, you'll recall that AMCO was not pro-measure. Uh, for Sibanye to yes. swallow loan mean. Yes. And the reason was very clear to Competitions Commission that the intention of Sibanye is just concentrating on the smelter, on the processing mm. plant, not to enhance or to change the lives of the community of Marikana or the employers as such. Yes. Because they made it clear that 13,500 uh, people they must lay off and to our surprise, our government just signed it uh, and then gave it to them, the Competitions Commission. Hence, we went to tribunal, even to appeal court in Cape Town, where I, the, the judge ruled in their favor. So this was the issue. And, but we still believe that Lon Min, during Ben Magara last year, financial year, we turned the corner because it was the first time they make a huge profit which I believe was mm. over 60 billion. Mm. And mm. then also the workers, they got the ESOP dividends out of there. Yes. And also the second quarter, we made what, 1.1 billion operational profit. And they've got only three to four months in the mine. So how did they experience any, any losses? Uh, 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 it's still bugging yeah. my mind. Yeah. Uh, my what mind. are the reasons that they're giving you? Is it only just that it's difficult, the economy is tough, they're not making profits? Is that the excuse? I mean, we still want to hear from them what will be their excuses. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, as far as we know, the PGM prices, I mean, are uh, actually appreciated. I mean, sure. the, I mean the, even the platinum itself has appreciated the price. So if the mines, we were able to get better salaries in increment, we stabilized the mine for the past 18 months. So what is it now in four months that has changed mm. drastically? Mm. What are you actually asking for then with regards to the plat platinum sector as a whole, particularly because you, we are in sort of uh, a bargaining term with them for now? Yes, uh, I mean, we, we demanded 17,000 rand. And then we moved to... Is that the, across all segments yes, for workers? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then what happened then during the wage negotiations, we moved to 1,500 for each year. Mm. And then Anglo had an appetite and Impala, which they previously were giving us 600, others 700. They moved to 1,000. Sure. It's only Sibanye, uh, still water, that is dragging their feet. So hence we've declared a dispute with Sibanye mm. and also with Anglo. We, yesterday we had a mass meeting with our members at Impala, of which they said, yeah, irrespective that they are above 1,000 rand, but declared a dispute, then yeah. we'll meet at CCMA. Oh. So how, how are the meetings going at CCMA? Have you met at the CCMA yet? Are you still yet to? Uh, How is that discussion going? No, we're still waiting for the date for the CCMA. Okay. Uh, once that we are notified for the date, then mm. we'll be sitting there. But with Anglo, we still have got a one meeting tomorrow. Okay. The internal process for them, they requested another meeting of which we'll engage with them and see what are they bringing yeah. on the table, whether there's a better offer or not. Sure. You made note now just a, a moment ago with regards to the PGM prices having uh, appreciated uh, slightly, over, particularly over the last year. It's, it's actually a fair amount. Uh, you, you're quite correct on that one. Would you be opposed to perhaps uh, um, a notion to give workers um, salary increases based then on the fluctuation in metals prices on a year and year basis or would that sort of work against what you're trying to achieve here as stability for your workers in terms of uh, payment and, and uh, money for services rendered 
I think that it will be quite difficult because the salaries of the mine workers are, are, are below, I mean, uh, poverty line. Yeah. So therefore, it will be difficult. I mean, for the big bosses of the mines, it quite be easy because they've got safety nets. Mm. Uh, if their salaries, are, I mean, are fixed, also they've got bonuses that they get. I mean, like, for instance, I think Sibanyi, their financial 2017, 2018, two of their bosses, they wall up 59 million rand. And then where is the worker? I mean, mm -hmm. under that scenario. So it cannot work. I mean, remember, we sell the PGMs uh, based on rent dollar, but yeah. workers are paid on rent. Uh, yes. I mean, so, yes. so they, are, they are scoring all the way. And if they have to retrench 5,200, remember that that number cannot be calculated for future uh, labor cost. Mm. So they will be saving along, I mean, along those lines. So they are saving all the way. You've got natural attrition, workers, they leave work based on uh, uh, medical reasons and so forth. So they are, and then we don't change. Even when the prices appreciate, if, to, if let's say we clinch a deal of 1,005 now, yes. and the, the platinum or PGM or the platinum appreciate to $2,000 uh, per ounce, we will never change the wage negotiations. Yes. They will be still scoring as, once they are, as what they are experiencing yeah. now. All right. If you take that scenario then, and I want you to, to think, I mean, you'd even agree that the uh, sustainability of any mining company is good for South Africa's economy. It's good for your members as well uh, in terms of, of, of work. If we were to find a middle ground with regards to future negotiations, and I'm talking about how pay works in, in the entire uh, structure for mining houses, what would, you be, what would your best solution be then for the sector? The sector, I, I think we, we, we need to move to a point where mine workers, they've got a proper equity share in the mines. Sure. Uh, I think then it can leverage the shortcomings. Mm. But now, at this point in time, you just give what, uh, they, you just receive what they give to you. For instance, these uh, employee share option schemes that the ESOPs that they are giving us, yes. always when they make profit, they'll say, you are still paying your debt. Mm, so, okay. uh, I mean, there will be no proceed coming to the workers. Yes. And uh, in many mines, the Impala, they've never realized it. I mean, since its inception. Sure. So, 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 therefore, it, it's not a really transparent and progressive way of workers benefiting from the mineral. But you find that the CEOs, they always benefit all the way. Mm. Given that conversation, have, have any of them come to you with a sense of saying, we understand the plight, we will do everything we can now to work with you? Are you is, is there perhaps a company that you feel you're working with right now to be able to try and solve uh, this, the, the despairing issues that face mine workers as a whole, not just on the salary front, but we're talking as a whole then with regards to uh, uh, whether it be the equity entrenchment that you can get for them, uh, workers' conditions, housing allowances, all of those issues? I think we, we, we are in a very difficult space. You know, the, the way how mines were, were established, were established based on equi inequality. Yes. And the, this wage structure. Mm -hmm. So it's not difficult for these mining bosses to change because the change will affect their proceed at the end of mm -hmm. the day. So the change will come with pain. I mean, for us to, just for the workers to move from 4,000 rand to whatever, 10, 11,000, we have to go for strike for five months, of which they are not really prepared to change these mm. guys. So you have to lose something in order to gain something at the end of the day. How long are you prepared to go on strike for this time around to get what you require, particularly in that platinum mining segment? The fact of the matter, one is not negotiating for a strike. We're negotiating for a settlement. Yes. But if they're becoming very realistic, we cannot in the previous six years receiving 1,000 rand when the PGM price were not as good as it is now. Yes. When it's appreciating that you want to go lower than 1,000 rand, I think that is not fair. It's, it's stealing. That's why I was saying yes. that yes. the thief is only to steal and kill and destroy. That is what they are doing. But themselves, I mean, if you look at uh, the two guys uh, that was a former C CEO of Lon Min and the CFO, mm -hmm. I mean, Together, their, uh, I mean, their, what's name, their golden handshake was almost over 40 million to 50 million rands. Sure. And that man was supposed to go to the workers mm. at the end of the day. Mm. But Sibanyi decided to move them away 
in order to continue the way how they want to run the company in the expense of the workers. And also these companies, they've declared their dividends earlier in order to allow themselves a space to plead poverty, that yes. they are not making profit. So if it's not illicit financial for, uh, flow, if it's not tax dodging, they declare their dividends earlier in order to frustrate the workers. Mm. All right. Let's talk very quickly then about technological advancements. We, 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 we made note of uh, your comments regarding the fourth industrial revolution and all of those sentiments. Uh, what exactly is your stance on it? Are you saying there must be a delay in the primary sector particularly, which includes mining, of course, when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution and the advancement of technology in, in mining houses? It must be a just transition. I mean, if we are in a country where we are above 30% of unemployment, 10 million people are not working, and then you want to advance the fourth industrial revolution, which is more technology, which will, it won't be human friendly. Mm. So it doesn't assist us. Remember, your, your, your primary economy, it also assists you with your tax base. Yes. So the more employees I mean, are employed, the better your fiscals or your fiscals is. But if you remove that element, surely, uh, I mean, we won't be in the position. Very quickly, I must add then to that, though, what about the, the redevelopment or the upskilling then of workers? Has that perhaps been a discussion in order to help? It hasn't been. It hasn't been. They just want to push this mechanization, this fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. And then once you push it, remember, Africa or South Africa in particular, we've been used to build Europe. Yeah. And now it's time to build ourselves. They come up with climate change, which, yes, it's true, fine. But where were the scientists when all the extraction were given to, what's name, to Europe, to build yes. Europe? Yes. When it's time to build ourselves, now it's a climate change. When sure. we are busy with climate change, it's a fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> a whole lot of issues at hand. Exactly. I was hoping you wouldn't go Trump on us and say that climate change doesn't exist. But Mr. Matunja, thank you so much thank for the time. Thank you very time. much, my Really, really God appreciate it. Thank Joseph you Matunja, there, the president of AMCO, then joining us, of course, live here in our Johannesburg studios. Now, very quickly.